Good morning. It is so wonderful to see all of you here. Welcome to the Lord's house. How great it is to gather together to hear his word and to grow in our knowledge and our love for him as we learn more of his love for us through Jesus Christ. Again, welcome to all of you. Uh, a few quick announcements. Uh, you'll notice in the bulletin, uh, first of all, there's an adults dine out coming out in a couple of weeks, so if you're interested in that, please sign up. The PTL will soon be starting a new uh, fundraiser selling caramel apples, so I don't think the uh, information on that is out there yet, but it will be soon. Also, Trunk or Treat is coming up on October 31st, so there's always need for volunteers or helpers or uh, uh, donations of candy, so uh, take a look at that in the bulletin as well. And uh, also, there is going to be a one-day seminar on, called Surviving the Holidays for all those who are suffering from grief. You want to know uh, some uh, extra, I want to have some extra help to get through the holiday time. That will be led by Becky Russell, so take a look at uh, that information in the bulletin. We'd also like to welcome all those of you listening on the radio and watching on the internet. This is the service of Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Stevensville, Michigan. Our services on Sunday are at 8 and 1045, with a church service on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. for those unable to come on the weekend. Our church is located on Cleveland Avenue, just south of Glenlord Road. And our broadcast today is given uh, in loving memory of Barbara Whitwam by David Whitwam. We thank him for his sponsorship. With that, let's begin with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just Present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son Jesus Christ. 
lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord people on earth.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, whose grace always precedes and follows us, help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and to find in you our heavenly treasure. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from the Book of Concord. Luther's large catechism, the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What this means, you shall have me alone as your God. What is the meaning of this and how is it understood? What does it mean to have, have a God or what is God? Answer, a God means that from, from which we are to expect all good and in which we are to take refuge in all distress. So to have a God is nothing other than trusting and believing him with the heart. <clears throat> I have often said that the confidence and faith of the heart alone make both God and an idol. If your faith and trust is right, then your God is also true. On the other hand, if your trust is false and wrong, then you do not have the true God. For, those, for these two belong together, faith and God. Now I say that whatever you set your heart on and put your trust in is truly your God. On this, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, our Old Testament lesson is from Amos chapter 5. Seek the Lord and live lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and it devour with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth. They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and you exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions, and how great are your sins, you who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe, and turn aside the needy in the gate. Therefore he who is prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good, and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have said, hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will command his angels concerning you. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all Our epistle lesson is from Hebrews chapter 3. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Bear one another's burdens. Alleluia.
Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. As Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Once again, we welcome all those of you listening on the radio and those who are watching on the internet. This is the Service of Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Stevensville, Michigan. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. You're walking off the baseball diamond or the soccer field, and one of your young kids asks you, Hey, Dad, who won? It certainly uh, can be appropriate, especially with little kids, to say, Well, it doesn't matter. Did you play your hardest? Did you have fun? That's what matters. That's good enough. If you go to the average non-Lutheran funeral, although I must uh, point out that they're not called that anymore, it's now a celebration of life, although that makes me wonder what and whose life is being celebrated. But if you go to one and there's somebody there who kind of asks or wonders, did they go to heaven? The answer you'll typically get is, well, yes, of course they are. He was basically a good person. Did you hear all those good things that he did throughout his life? He tried his hardest. He did lots of good things. That's good enough. As Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The man was basically asking, Teacher, tell me what I must do. How much is enough to get into heaven? I've lived a good life. Tell me, good teacher, is that good enough? The man was looking to justify himself. But Jesus couldn't do that. You see, when it comes to God, is there such a thing as good enough? With God, there's always more. There's always more required of you to do to earn your way to heaven. You go shopping to the grocery store. You got a pretty good list of groceries. You get them all, plus a few extra things. You know, those sales on the end caps, they always suck you in, right? And you get up to the uh, ca checkout lane, and the cashier is ringing you up, and then all of a sudden you notice you don't have your checkbook or credit card with you. Well, you look quickly through your purse or your wallet and the cashier finishes ringing things up and you realize you only have maybe two-thirds of the cash that's needed. You know what the answer would be if you asked the cashier, I have most of the money but not all of it. Is that good enough? Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. Is that good enough? The man says, I've obeyed the Ten Commandments. I've never killed anyone, never stolen, never committed adultery. I've obeyed the letter of the law, good teacher. Is that good enough? But with God, there's always more, always more required to earn your way to heaven. You may remember that Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount that it's not just good enough to obey the letter of the law with your outward actions. But what God wants is your whole heart, mind, and soul as well. Jesus says if you hate someone, you've committed murder. If you've lusted after someone, you've committed adultery. You see, with God, there's always more. It's not just about your outward actions. That's not good enough. It's about surrendering the desire of your heart. Have you done that? In those well-known movies, The Pirates of the Caribbean, very popular movies back a while ago, the main character, Jack Sparrow, the main pirate in the movie, 
he has a very special compass that points in the direction of whatever his heart most desires. And there's one kind of humorous scene in one of the movies, I don't remember which one, where the compass kind of orients and points right next to him and he looks down and there's a bottle of rum. <laughs> he takes the rum and takes a swig and then the compass reorients and points in the direction he needs to go for whatever his heart next most desires. If you had such a compass, what would it point to? Maybe a new car, a fancy house, some, some sort of possession or material goods. Maybe money or security to be free from anxieties. Maybe freedom to do whatever you want unhindered. Maybe the deepest desire of your heart is having fun, enjoyment, pleasure. Maybe what is most valuable to you is your mind, your reputation, or status. Maybe it's a, rep a relationship, family. Jesus knew what the compass of that young man pointed to. So Jesus tested him to show him that it was not good enough. Jesus said, looking at him, loved him, and said to him, you lack one thing, go sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Jesus knew what was most valuable to that young man. So he tested him to see if his wealth had become a god. Could you do that? Could you give up the most precious desire of your heart, the thing you most value or want? Could you give that up for God? And even if you think you could, with God, there's still more. There's still more required because God wants perfection, complete obedience, not just the biggest desire of your heart, but every desire of your heart. 100% compliance, zero tolerance for failure. If you have anything less, it's not good enough. The rich young man finally realized this. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions. The rich young man said to himself, I can't. He said, I can't do it. I can't be good enough. With God, there's always more required, and I can't. But there is someone who can. The rich young man wanted to know how to get to heaven, and he started out by coming to Jesus and addressing him as good teacher. That was a great start. Jesus replied, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Right there, Christ admitted that he is God. The man knew that Christ was a good teacher, and in order to get to heaven, you must be taught. However, it's not about being taught what to do or taught about what to say or how to act. That's the mistake of the young man. Rather, it's about being taught about Christ. And Jesus, the good teacher, teaches you about himself. He teaches you about himself through his word. That's how faith is strengthened. And Jesus gives that to you as a gift. But that's not enough. Because with Christ, there is always more. There is more to give to you. When Jesus saw that this young man came to be taught and he started out on the right path by coming to Jesus himself, Jesus loved him. And Jesus loves you too. You too have come to the right place here in church to hear God's word, to be taught by Christ himself. And Jesus loves you too. But that's not enough. With Christ, there is always more, always more to give to you. This whole event takes place as Jesus is setting out on his journey you see, Jesus didn't just come down from heaven just merely to teach you. 
as important as that is, he came for a journey. He was on a journey with a purpose. He was on a journey to the cross. Christ gave up what was most valuable to him, what his compass pointed to. He, he gave up his relationship with the Father. He allowed himself to be abandoned, separated, forsaken from God the Father while hanging on the cross. And in that moment, the very nature of the Holy Trinity was torn asunder. Jesus gave up what was most valuable to him, and he did it for you, each one of you. But with Christ, that's not enough. There's always more to give. That gift of his death and resurrection, it's not just some isolated event back there in history. He just didn't do merely what he needed to back then and then go back up to heaven to be remote from us. He delivers that gift to you every day. First and foremost, when you were baptized and united to him in faith. But that's still not enough. With Christ, there is always more. He constantly tells you, every time you repent of your sins, he tells you, you are forgiven. And yet with Christ, there is always more. He constantly teaches you and preserves you and strengthens you through his word. And yet, there's still more. He strengthens and preserves you through his true body and blood, not some mere symbolic representation. But he gives to you himself right here. And yet, there's always more. Because he constantly, constantly tells you how much he loves you how valuable you are to him. You, God's people, are valuable to Christ. And yet there's still more. There's always more forgiveness, always more strengthening of faith, always more love of Christ to give to you. With Christ, there's always more for you. Because you are his most valuable possession. You are what the compass of Jesus now points to. The most valuable desire of his heart. That's you. And so there's always more. Jesus always has more to give to you. Until that one day, that great and final day, when he calls you, when he calls all of us home to heaven. Because on that day when he calls you home to heaven, then all your desires, all the desires of your sinful heart will be changed. And instead, you will be focused on Christ. Here in this earthly life, Jesus always has more to give to you until you are in heaven with him, because then you will be complete. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding guard and keep your hearts and your minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We now have the opportunity to join together in unity, publicly confessing the faith that was given to us by using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of the heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, 
ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray. O Lord, God of hosts, reveal our sin to us through your word. Do not let us dare to approach you in our own righteousness, but rather to come before you humbly in repentance that we may inherit eternal life through your grace in Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, God of hosts, Keep us from hating those whom you send to reprove us with your law, and keep us from abhorring those who speak your truth to us, that we might repent of our sin and live. We ask for your blessing upon our pastor, our principal and teachers, and all of our church workers, and all of our missionaries, including Reverend Herb and Marky Birch in Belize, Deaconess Caitlin Warden de Ramirez in the Dominican Republic, and Reverend Roger James in the Philippines. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O Lord, God of hosts, sanctify us with your spirit, that we may hate evil and never pursue it, but instead love good and seek it always. We ask for your blessing upon our congregation, upon all of our members, those gathered here, and especially this day we pray for John and Christy Sandman family, Jennifer Steffens, Tim and Fernie Rantz and family, Sam and Diane Setkowski family, Joanne Seabach, and the Kevin and Anita White family. Grant us all humble repentance and strength of faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, God of hosts, let your favor be upon all those who are in authority over us. Give wisdom to our president and Congress, our governor and legislature, all of our judiciary, all those who serve us in our community, our police and firefighters and healthcare workers, and all those who guard and protect us in the military, including Alex Root, Allison Blake, James Virgi, Joseph Schaefer, Mitchell Carter, and Matt Weiss. Establish the good works of their hands upon us that we may live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, God of hosts, have pity on all those who are sick or ailing in any way. We especially lift before you this day Addie Scheffler, Amanda Clark, Amy Manti, Barbara Mall, Carla Frischkorn, Beth Davis, Dave Knuth, Fernie Rance, Jan Kalinas, Janet Zilke, Jean Mort, Joseph Klopp, Kathy Karnick, Laura Lesher, Lee Yeski, Miro Versick, Nancy Duke, Nathan Gherkin. Also, Aubrey Hamby, Austin Arndt, Carol Searing, Kate Reed, Grace Gherkin, Jim Russell, Keith Avery, Kevin Schmidt, Nancy Gerald, Maria Young, Marion Gherkin, Mary Grish, Paula Hicks, Phil Oberhaus, Taryn Schrader, Valerie Watson, and William Mall. Grant them health and healing according to your will. Satisfy them with your steadfast love in Christ and strengthen them in faith and in patience and perseverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace with great joy. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.